Hello guys, it's Peter from PS Sound, and now this is part seven, I think. When I'm shooting it right now, um, I'm not even sure when this video is gonna be released, but I think uh, you should have seen the previous part, which should be a teaser video and the first impression with the owner, which was two days ago when the trunk wasn't even finished. Um, now I, I have a walk around part, so I explain everything and then there will be another part coming in a few days time when I'm going to show you the tuning of this system. So as uh, this was supposed to be a seven day install, uh, it had to be kept simple. Um, I went beyond simple in many ways, although the trunk is looking simple as we see. It's nothing as crazy as I normally do, but you know, after I, I probably, I doubled the days that went into this build. Um, I had to pull a line somewhere and I ran out of time. I couldn't go anymore, you know, any crazier than this. Um, the client wanted something um, show styly, you know, with a bit of pop effect. Um, I think this has enough pop factor. Um, so you could see from previous videos that uh, underneath the floor I have the power distribution on that side, two amps over there, subwoofer enclosure extending to this side. Um, so this way I could make everything central. Um, the floor panel now that's carpeted to the same black as the interior or the, well, the interior of the trunk. Um, that panel is from two pieces joined in the middle. What you don't see now because we have this middle piece covering that joint point. Um, something rather simple. This panel is floating and it's sitting. I think I've shown this before or you could see from install pictures. I have threaded bars into uh, threaded inserts that I can, uh, you know, set up to the right height. And then this way the panel sits on the top and it was built in a way that once you push the seat, Back, it slams it into place so it can't move anywhere but it's really easy to take it off all the lights are underneath washing down and around the subs forward and and you know back so it, it gives a bit of well it gives more highlight to the subwoofer but then we have the helix v8 down there with the x um, sorry the m1x monoblock plenty of power for the sub but as you could hear from the, from the previous video with the owner, that um, the mid bass is so good in the car that it, it, the sub is just kind of... It's not true that it's not needed because there are many music genres where you want that. Plus, you, when you, when you want to feel it, then, then you have all the power on the planet now with this for a three-way um, front-end, active front-end. Okay, we also have differential rear fields that I've never really talked about. And you can't see anything but four-inch helix coax speakers are fitted in the factory location at the back and we use them as um, differential rear fill although I have a preset where they run fully fully uh, wide range and then that way you know if he goes to friends who have a big garden and, and they want to play music from the car they can open the rear door as well and it blasts everything um, so up front here we are so now you can see the whole system in full glory. We have the sail panels um, and we made these um, plexi, black plexi trim rings with the CNC. So it slots in perfectly into the steel rings, uh, which the speakers are mounted to. This way it gives a cleaner look because the client originally wanted something OEM looking. Um, I think we kind of achieved that. It's not fully OEM, obviously. People can tell that this is custom, but it is not shouty. It's not too much in the face. Um, the A pillar is also following the interior color. Although we use slightly different material, uh, which is easier to trim with, but um, it blends in nicely. The sail panels were painted before as well. So that also follows the OEM um, layout. And then, from previous videos, you could see enough of this. Mid bass is right down there. And then from the tuning video, you will see what it actually does, how it measures. But honestly, this is one of the best mid bass solution I've ever heard. And I feel really screwed up because I want this in my car as well. Alrighty, okie doke. So here, 
we have the director mounted now. It's wedged in, it got a uh, Perspex um, mounting frame cut with the mounting frame of the director. So the director just pushes in and that uh, plexi frame also pushes into this slot as it's trimmed. It's so tight fit that um, it doesn't go anywhere, but it can be taken out and it has to be able to come out because the OBD port for the car is right behind it. So that was no way to make a fully permanent mounting for it. But as I say, this is not going anywhere. So it's pretty good. Um, and the other side. The radio is, is, is something rather cheap, Pioneer whatever. Um, it does dab, you know, it's pretty much used only for that. There's no point to connect to it on Bluetooth because we have the Hack BT module in the Helix V8, so client can stream directly to it. And he also learned that um, what he plays is very, very important because uh, most of his music was on SoundCloud and YouTube. And when he played his music, he realized that it didn't sound really impressive. And then I showed to him when I played from my iPad where everything is downloaded into offline mode in best quality. Everything just came alive, way more detail and dynamics in the system. And even if it's subscription based and it costs money, he was like, shit, I, I need it. Because I always say what you put into a system, you know, that comes out of it. And once now this system is really revealing, um, it shows not just the good things, but the bad things as well. Uh, maybe one more info for those who have this Renault again or something similar. Uh, to be fair, most of the cars have this issue that they have hardly any space behind the head unit and you can hardly fit it with all the uh, plugs and everything and RCA cables, you can't push it in and it doesn't want to go anywhere. You don't have access to it from the back. So what you can do, uh, you can take in this car, you, you know, this panel can come out. You can carefully get under it with um, trim panel tools, pop it out, take the vents out, they come out very easily. And then you can reach down and then you can arrange the plugs out of the way so the head unit can slot in. And it, it's now it's slotted in properly because before <laughs> it was in the cage, but the cage wasn't fixed in. So you could pull the whole thing out with the cage attached to it. It was rather, yeah, rather funny. So here we are, Micro Precision 5 Series and they do a fantastic job. The mid-range is actually so good that now I can see why they haven't made a mid-range for the 7 series because they use the 5 series mid-range for uh, that series too. I can't say anything bad about this setup really. Um, maybe the only thing is that yes, you know, it's for the lower budget system and the V8 is what it is. It's a one box solution. It does many things really well. But yes, it's not like using, you know, super high end AB plus amplifiers. You don't have that level of detail and transparency, but it's a fantastic one box solution. So overall, I think, well, you could see from the first impression video that he was over the moon. So job accomplished and, and um, I can't even talk. I'm, I'm knackered. Yeah, um, I am tired. <laughs> No surprise. Um, with Lee, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we were doing human hours, you know, nine hours a day. Um, and then from Thursday on, I really had to push hours because I could see that there was a lot. Um, and B helped a bit more as well because I didn't show you the engine bay, but please go to the description and click on um, the link because it takes you to my Facebook page. Even if you don't have Facebook, you can open it and you can see the build pictures. You can see how much extra work we had with this car that we didn't think of. And it's it's pretty much the same with most of the cars. You never know what what you're gonna have. If new cars have you know different types of challenges. Um, this had its own challenges. Well, mainly it's a French car. Um, all the doors, everything had to be treated, soundproof, sound and And then some people say that, you know, what's the point? It's it's a loud car. I mean it's not like a premium car, it's an entry level car and then so much tire noise and, and engine noise comes through. And yes, yes, it's true. If you wanted to do an extensive job, you could spend a week just to soundproof the whole car. And that's a difference when you buy a premium car. 
but then it costs so much more you know you buy a 5 series or 7 series bmw or anything up on that level they are quiet straight out of the factory but that's why they also weigh more they cost more so you know um but i would never say that it's not worth treating um panels and doors and whatnot in the car because anything you do is going to help and just the fact that we treated the doors we don't have rattles coming from them because before even even if you know you didn't play any music the panels just rattled in the car now they are that quiet when you shut the door you can feel that it gives a better more premium feeling in the trunk i did that extensive soundproofing down in the spare wheel well um the trunk lid and and that panel which is down at the i don't know what you call it in this cuff panel when you pull your stuff out of the car you know you have that panel right there um i treated everything and and that quiets even even when you crank the system crank the system loud it's silent so I'm, I'm really happy with that and it was worth putting those extra time um those extra hours into the car but like yeah pulling power cable into the car six hours for two people it's just ridiculous we had this before in in um in an alpha gt that was difficult to work with half of the engine bay had to come apart and people never think of things like this um so all i can suggest to everyone if you get a big project built by an installer if you don't want to be screwed over if you don't want to feel like you you are ripped off because they charge you extra anything ask for daily updates i know many shops don't want to do it because oh it's too much work no it's not extra work um it takes five minutes at the end of the day to run around the car show everything what's been done and take a few pictures that they can also share whether they share it on their social media sites or on their website i don't care but at least you get updates and then you see what's been done on the car what they hid what what you know they screwed over and or, you know what corners they cut and then you won't see so many people going on forums and then crying that oh i paid this much and then look what they did sorry it's your fault and then when some people tear you off on the forums don't feel bad it's your fault so always make sure that you get the updates you see what's been done to the car um, also when you go to your shop listen to their demo cars if they sound shit you know what you will get that simple if they can't show you a demo car then uh, question mark of, of course okay i i have few installer friends who are really good in the country some of the best and at the moment they don't have a demo car for many different reasons um but if if, the, if a shop tells you to stand in front of a demo wall and then select speakers walk out honestly walk out of there unless your reference level is so low that you just want something slightly better than the factory you know you have old speakers in in the doors and they crackle and or they are dead okay but when you want a system like this what i'm always pushing this sq you know some people make fun out of it but sound quality it's a different story you know when a car creates an atmosphere just like if you were sitting in, in front of the band the hardware disappears that's the most difficult thing you don't listen to the speakers anymore you listen to the music no rattles you know no crazy reflections issues with spectral balance everything just sounds right then you you discover all the music that you used to love well actually you realize what we said in the previous video that some some songs actually sound bad because the mastering on the song songs were bad and you never had a system that could reveal it now you get a proper system which reveals it and then it sounds eh. so i talk i talk too much guys sorry for that i could talk about it all day long um i cut this here now so the next one is going to be about tuning when i show you what the system is doing and uh yeah this is pretty much it nine days although i think roughly around 14 15 days went into this car now in nine days a bit more than a week crazy but well you can see where it went guys feel free to share the video please it means a lot not because i you know i make millions out of these videos but i'm not honestly i don't get anything from youtube right now because yeah they are doing stupid things but people have to see these videos then they understand what goes into your car to get great sounds and they know why it's so labor intensive um so share it go for it please subscribe 
you know, comments, usual way. If I can't, you know, reply to all your comments, sorry, especially during this week. Um, on the top of my 12, 14, sometimes 16 hour days, I was taking time away from being with my missus or sleeping just to share these videos, share all the, all the pictures so you can follow it. So I've been, yeah, pushing the limits for sure. But I'm going to try to catch up with you and yeah, comment and, and, you know, reply as much as I can. This is it. Done. See you in the next one. Take care.